Hello, you're back with Dave and Tim with a single malt review for another exciting foray into Indian whiskey. Mm-hmm. Back in 2023, we reviewed Trini, the debut flagship single malt from Indri, a relatively new entry into the burgeoning world of Indian whiskey. And they have very kindly sent us another bottle for sampling. This is one I am honestly genuinely very excited about. This is Drew, which is the first cask strength offering. Yeah, in this monolith of a box. Oh yeah. Um, goodness me, I'm about to make a Space Odyssey joke, but I won't. Um, yes, the injury people have very kindly sent this one down for us to take a look at, and there's a lot to unpack here, as Dave does the unpacking. Um, this is, despite being a mega, mega, mega strong whiskey, um, still considering that the, um, the, the loss rate is well over 10% per year, um, in India, maturing in that climate, um, they've done very well to hold on to quite so much strength mm. to make this a, a hell of a cask strength. And not only least. is it cask strength, the other key difference in Trini is that there is only one cask type in Blay here instead of three. This is yes. purely ex bourbon barrels. Um, which makes this colour phenomenal. It is astonishingly dark. It's like well, like a high proof old bourbon in fact. It's 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 a little bit baffling. In mm-hmm. all my years, all my years of whiskey, I have never, ever, ever seen that colour out of a bourbon yeah. cask. Um, X, then again, we've never seen film. single cask type matured in the, compared to us, shockingly high temperatures of yeah. northern India. So at 40 degree summers. I think this just, just must be a figment of yeah. the ravenous summer they have there. Mm. It must rinse that colour out of those bottles. Oh, yeah. um, the um, differential between overnight cool and... Um, uh, daytime heat, I think it's probably hmm. sponging it out there like a rickhouse style, and we've gotten yep. colour extraction tantamount to boiling that wood to yeah. get the, the rich colour out. Um, so already quite an unusual whiskey, oh, yeah. and that's just visually. Um, and as we start to sort of crack this nut, you'll realise there is there's just a heck of a lot going on. Yes. Which is like we enjoyed the Truni quite a lot oh, as, yeah. I, as I appear in my scores. Um, that got a 91 from Dave and a 90 from me. So that was that was in no way mucking around. Um, I only had a, a tiny ding against that, and that's it, that it had quite, there was a bit of, ooh, there's a bit of hotness, hotness right. coming through. So we'll see if they have in any way ameliorated mm. that for this next release. Yeah. So I'm a big fan of the cask strength, no age statement whiskey, and I'm glad it's become a thing in whiskey generally. Yeah, for sure. Um, this is their first foray into cask strength, so mm. we'll see if we see a second batch um, constant with this. I think we will, because this has proven to be quite oh, yeah. popular. And this has received stunning scores. Uh, this first came to my attention via a glowing review from Dramface, and uh, yeah, it's, it's just yeah, gone leaps and bounds. Yeah, so let's see what we got. Um, you can pretty much nose this one from about here. Yeah. Um, and that's not because there's lots of strong alcohol, it's because the amount of flavour concentration in here is bananas. Mm. Quite literally bananas. <laughs> and then overripe bananas is one of the first notes I get. Um, we've done a pre-taste of this one because there was there is just so much packed in here. Trying yes. to do the whole thing live would just be an exercise in meandering around blindly and, and probably not capturing everything. And there's just so much to capture that we did have a little, a little team exercise and... Um, run this one through its paces previously and we found just a hell of a lot there is spice in this whiskey like almost nothing else we have tried as i glance at my sheet mm. here there's licorice and interestingly dave got um dutch salted style licorice yes. whereas i get soft more um aromatic licorice so I guess depending on which licorice you're um, you're into, or maybe just which licorice you are used to, because I don't eat a lot of the Dutch stuff. That's how mm. it will speak to you. But Dutch or Danish? I forget. Damn, too much. Oh, goodness knows. It's, it's like one of those from that yeah. part of the world. Yes. Um, check out yeah. our new channel, um, single <laughs> licorice review. Mm. Um, but there, there's anise, there's clove, there's cola in here. There's yeah. such a smorgasbord of spice. There's the whole rack going on in this whiskey, mm. and it's interesting. And that's just on the nose. Yeah, there is there is spice in here that you would only find in American bourbon. It's mm. it's somehow broken free of the typical boundaries of mm. aroma that you would get in a malt whiskey, um, and it's gotten entirely off the reservation, which is compelling. It's interesting. So, at full strength on the palate, what do we find? Hmm. Not a huge amount of burn. Once that initial. F- flash of fire disappears yep. then the layers of sweetness the rich very slightly smoky wood 
uh, honey, molasses, sugar syrup, spice after spice. The first thing I get, and funny enough, um, show as much of a pointless exercise as it was, what I missed in our initial tasting of this, that I get a really mineral char from those ex-bourbon casks. I think they probably had a really, really good solid whack of char on them there. And that's definitely hitting up the flavour. And then there's that ripe fruit, very, yeah. very ripe fruit. When you sort of, when you get in range of... Um, when you get in range of your fruit bowl and there's a conspicuous number mm -hmm. of fruit flies around it and you think, mmm, <laughs> something in there has taken a turn. Something in yeah. there has crossed the ripeness line and is probably going to have to be retrieved and um, put in the bin. Um, it's that sort of deeply, deeply aromatic, slightly waxy, but very, very, very pungent mm. ripeness of something that's just about to or has just gone a little bit too far yeah. in the in the ripening stakes. What and I'm thinking of is cherries and strawberries when they've just begun to go soft mm. they're slightly past peak ripeness they're just starting to turn slightly there's a hint of sharpness a little less sweetness and that's happening here so they're starting to ferment slightly there's a tang but there's still that fruit there but it's the sweetness is dialed back for that's, sure that uh that salted licorice is there in abundance on the tongue too it is it's just it is so potent i've been going for another sip because yeah. this is official tasting notes also speak of dark chocolate but oh, um, yeah. to me that's that's more in the background and it's a very very dark chocolate. it is a brutally it's strong a dark completely chocolate, like unsweetened 90 percent cocoa plus if you've ever tried that where it yeah. almost sucks the moisture out of your mouth it's so sure. so dark um so the, dry the main thing to get across here because yes it's complex there's all sorts of there's a great great um breadth of flavor the concentration is really really quite something else yeah um a, the tiniest sip will give you such an eruption of flavor across the tongue that is i think the whiskey's um most uh if not its greatest strength then its most standout feature is just how much is packed into just a drop of yes. this whiskey it's very 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 concentrated so it's almost like they made some kind of concentrated essence of bourbon and single malt whiskey well i think we're just this is probably the most extreme version of the supreme acceleration in aging time that we see out of India. The climate is just yeah. so, so different. Um, the whiskey time machine is supremely in effect. Um, that oh. has not given a great deal of We power. didn't try this with water during our pre-taste, so, well, you have, but I haven't, mm -hmm. so uh, this is going to be entirely new to me, basically a whole new whiskey, hopefully. And what mm. it is, is a much fruitier whiskey. Yeah. This is taking on a little bit more familiarity to the Trini that we're more used to, and Hmm. Whereas that one had a whole lot of bright fruit about it, um, this one is much, much deeper, darker um, in terms of what it's doing. With that water, it's brought the flavour up. It's got a little bit more of an acetic kick yeah. to it, and the ripeness is more peak ripeness rather than overripe ripeness now. It's given me hints of papaya, pawpaw to some of you, um, tinned mango. Yeah, that fruit is happening. But still very, very spice driven. Um, if anything, oh, I yeah. think as long as your palate can handle it, I think this whiskey has the intensity and the concentration are so striking at um, natural strength. I think that's probably how I'd recommend drinking mm -hmm. it. That just simply will not be an option for some people because um, for for um, inveterate whiskey drinkers like ourselves, we've sort of gotten used to mm -hmm. shockingly high ABVs over the years. Um, for people that drink whiskey in, in less of a in less of a, a, a frequency and um, ordered style than we do, that's a that's a hell of a lot mm. of um, alcohol to have on your <laughs> tongue. So yeah, it's um it will only be an option for some people. But if you can handle that ABV, I really would recommend trying it at least at the start at that strength because that's where I think the magic really comes across. With water, it's still a perfectly yeah. great whiskey. It has even it, gone sweeter with the water. Yeah, but it ends up a little bit more conventionally styled. I just had to splash more water in. Mm. Oh, there comes here comes the oak. There's the wood, the the sappiness of fresh oak, and the char of a used bourbon cask. Oh, that's delightful. That's a real spring bonfire. I'm trying to because we're being, and I think understandably, quite glowing about yeah. this whiskey. And this is another whiskey that may come back up um, somewhat, somewhat recently. Um, and it's not just us, and it's not just because we've received a sample. Though, <laughs> Johnny, it helps because we don't have to go and hunt the damn thing down. Um, yeah, this whiskey is receiving good press everywhere. It really is something special, and it's something new. It's yeah. something. It's an aspect of 
Indian malt whiskey that previously the world really hasn't seen. Um, I don't think we've ever seen one that's been this color. I don't think we've seen one that's for a, at least a stated, fully bourbon matured whiskey. The amount of sherry notes that this one manages mm. to manifest out of seemingly nowhere. The complexity um, is wrung out of one cast type. It's, yeah, the intensity of it too. It's really quite interesting. And there's a lot about this whiskey that I do not understand because <laughs> I do not understand the intricacies of um, maturation in those conditions. And I think this shows us, because every, every time we think we've got um, Indian whiskey solved, we think we know what's going on, something like this will come around and prove that we, in fact, do not. It's still such <laughs> a such a moving frontier yeah. um, I don't think anyone truly understands what um, what India does to whiskey mm -hmm. in terms of um, how it's produced and specifically how it ages and mm -hmm. I think this just rubs it in that no what everything we knew um, we didn't necessarily know it's like well we're down here in the South Pacific subtropics but uh, Indri is matured in environments where it is routinely 40 degrees Celsius during summer. Mm. I've, I've been in greenhouses and other environments. I've been to Australia once and experienced 40 degrees in person. I would not survive. I would wilt and die after too much of that. So this stuff has been at incredible temperatures for a long period of time compared to what we used to. So that's just with the sheer chemistry, the physics, the science involved means it is wringing more out of that wood than is physically possible in other environments. So it just does things which can't be done in Scotland or New Zealand or any of the big, great whiskey producing centres. Yeah. Okay. Scores time. Yep. This is probably why you were here. We have <laughs> gone on long enough. Um, like I said, we enjoyed the Trini quite a lot oh, yeah. with a, a 90 and a 91, respectively. Um, this one is a very, 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 very different whisky. Um, but I like it even better. Um, but not not through the roof. Not going to completely lose my mind. Mm. Um, I'm going to a 92 from oh. this one, which is still a pretty big jump because once you start climbing the 90 mountain, it gets yes. pretty steep, pretty fast. But um, and I'll say that um, high scores, despite this, is a very unconventional whiskey for sure. Um, this conforms to almost no conventions, which I'm okay with. Um, I don't mark on um, stylistic things that's uh, i have enough of a nightmare with that judging beers don't get me started about style guidelines um i don't think whiskey should have style guidelines and indeed it does not but they exist within the minds of some people so understand that this is a 92 from me it's an unconventional 92 mm. it may not be the 92 you are expecting from the standard range so heed heed that little bit of warning yeah. what do you think dave not for my entirely subjective point of view uh, this is a 93. This mm. is a staggering whiskey. It just delivers so much in abundance, and what it delivers is so strong and clear and refined. This is, if you want subtlety or a gentle, thoughtful, cogitative dram, this will just send you to your room. This is potent, unashamed, unabashed, unrestrained whiskey that just takes that cast character, elevates it in ways that I would not have thought possible, and just delivers it by the truckload to your palate. Yeah, it's all that, and it's weird. Oh, yeah. It's a weird whiskey. <laughs> um, I just happen to think it's weird in a good way. Oh, uh, absolutely. This, is, this breaks... It does its own the, thing in a way that would not... From the, color, from the colour down, this breaks conventions, which some of which, the colour um, being one of them, I didn't think could be broken. Mm -hmm. um, this does prove that yeah, once, you're, once you're making whiskey in India, um, then certain realities are no longer realities. You're in the twilight zone of what is possible. And this being what's possible, I think we've got even more reason to mm. expect even better things oh, uh, yeah. from Indian distilling later on. So that was an extremely, extremely promising glimpse into what's going on there. Mm. And thank you again for the um, sample from the fine folks at the Indri Whiskey Company there, doing really, really good stuff. We need to come back around and check on some Amrits and Paul Johns to see what the oh, other yes. the other players the other players have got going on because we don't want to give um, Indri all the press because um, mm -hmm. I'm sure that um, the other the other producers there have got something just as interesting in the works. Um, so we will we will make it our mission to check back in with those over the course of the year when the opportunity presents itself. So with that, we will let you go. I hope that was of some use. We will say Slanjo, or whatever they say on the continent over there. I should look that one up. Never mind. Um, 
you can let us know in the comments. We will be right back with something else. I don't have anything to glance at because we've, we've gone through our little bit of backlog here, but I'll guarantee you it'll be something scrummy.